I'm Edie Lush and I'm here outside the Hub Culture Ice House. Really pleased to be joined by one of our partners here uh, at Hub Culture, John Tote. Thanks very much for coming along. President of the FIA and the UN Secretary General Envoy, Special Envoy for Road Safety. Also, we've got an old friend, Olivier Oulier, President of Emotive. Now, you guys have a really interesting collaboration that we're featuring just at the bottom of the stairs here. I want you to tell me a little bit about why you've decided to bring road safety here and what the key messages are. I mean, clearly, Davos, the World Economic Forum, you have uh, all the world leaders, uh, politicians, business people, UN representative, and uh, road safety is one of the worst uh, pandemic of the society, and we don't speak about it. Hmm. And you know, it's not normal that every year 1.3 million people die on the roads, 50 million people are severely injured on the road. It's number one cause of mortality for youth between 14 to 29. And we feel we have a unique platform to speak about road safety here and uh, hopefully to decrease those numbers. And, uh, and then the partnership with um, Emotive is essential because, you know, we have the prescription for road safety. Mm -hmm. It's around education, law enforcement, vehicles, road infrastructures, and post-crash care. And, uh, of course, by um, addressing different things which is linked to human beings, we speak a lot about uh, connected car, mm -hmm. about autonomous car. Mm. But, uh, guess, when Nepal, Bangladesh, all those countries, mm. uh, Kenya, would uh, have uh, connected cars. Mm. You know, it would be decades before it happened. So we are trying to understand better what is happening. And uh, clearly, uh, drink driving. 25% mm -hmm. of the people killed on the road, it's because 25 of the, 25%. It's because of drink driving. 30% of the victims are pedestrian. Mm -hmm. So they are putting themselves in danger, and they can put others in danger. And uh, understanding better how the brain is reacting, how the brain is functioning, will definitely help us. Tell me about the technology that you've brought here and how your understanding of the brain is helping road safety. So, Emotive is a world leader in portable neuroinformatics. We can record not only one brain, but multiple brains, and better understand with machine learning and artificial intelligence how people pay attention. And attention is one of the key here when we talk about road safety. And distraction. Think about legal distractions. Mm. We got legal distractions in any car. New cars have screens everywhere. Mm. And we keep on looking at these screens. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are also the illegal distractions. Mm -hmm. What is forbidden? Taking mobile a call, phone. mobile phone. But car manufacturers are also embedding some help to people mm -hmm. that are distracting them. And this is quite a paradox. And we're trying to measure the brain activity of people while they are driving one of the FIA's top-notch mm. 3D virtual reality simulator in order to better understand when people pay attention, when they are distracted. And what is incredible in what Jean is bringing is the technology that allows you to experience to be drunk on the road, mm. which we of course don't recommend, mm. to be tired on the road and see how it changes how your brain pays attention. And one thing we need to mention about this partnership is the involvement of the Institut du Cerveau et de la Moelle Épinière, which is one of the best institutions in the world for brain and spinal, world research. Brain yes, and spinal cord brain and spinal cord that not only is involved in this partnership, but Jean co-founded and is the co-president of, and we have some of the best researchers mm. that are involved and specialized in attention dynamics. Jean. And uh, you know, Olivier said something which is uh, very important. I was talking about green driving, mm. but text driving is also a killer. Tell me about that. How much has that grown? I mean, it's, a, it's about the same level and it's uh, increasing, mm. you know. And um, we are talking about uh, text driving, but, uh, you know, I mean, modern cars with new technologies, mm. you have access with what you call GPS, mm -hmm. navigator. Mm. But when you are driving, you are looking at your navigator mm. and your attention is not anymore on the road, yeah. but on the monitor. Mm. So that is something which needs to be addressed. And I was mentioning, you know what to do, so we must now do it. And working together will allow to 
and so also to understand better and to create a momentum. So I'm interested in that policy angle on on the text, the drunk driving, the attention. How do you get in a world where we are supposed to be always connected uh, to our devices, to our vehicles? How do you encourage people to just focus on what's in front of them? I mean, I, you know, uh, I mean, overconnected is like a drug, so we must mm. be careful. And uh, it's probably a wider subject that's only on the road, mm. because you know now, youth, I mean, they are very often isolating themselves with, uh, with a computer, with a simulation uh, mm. game, with uh, all those kind of device, and it creates a dependence. So it's something where I feel we must create attention. So new technologies is fantastic, mm. is fascinating, but it's also a risk which needs to be addressed. Especially in the car, and there is a big paradox here. The more advanced the cars, mm. the more assistance you get. And the more assistance you get as a human being, the more relaxed you are and the mm. less attention you pay. As Jean mentioned, everyone is talking about autonomous vehicles, but we are a decade away at least mm -hmm. before the regulators accept it. The technology is here. But in the meantime, there is this tr transition period and everyone at the moment is wondering how humans are going to deal in this transition with AI in many sectors. Mm. The automotive industry, driving is one of them. The more help we get from the car, the less distracted we allow ourselves to be. Mm. So we want to understand what the core of humans in their brains, what is happening in order for the FIA not only to have data, but to use this data in order to inform the policy. This mm. is the role of the FIA. It's one of the biggest organization, most connected organization in the world. And Emotive is so grateful to Jean and all the people at the FIA and ICM for this collaboration because we're bringing something truly unique, mm. real data from real people in their real daily, mm. you know, uh, day activities that are going to be able to influence policy thanks to the FIA. Mm. What have you learned that uh, from from the from the emotive work that's in, informing your policy? Is it more? Are you focusing more on the, the the Western countries where we have these more connected cars, where my car tells me if I'm about to hit a cyclist that's that's, that's coming uh, in a strange direction, or is it more for countries where you said or you mentioned elsewhere, places like India, Bangladesh? Well, I would say it's for everybody, and mm -hmm. you know each each one has its uh, own problems and uh, clearly uh, develop what we call developed countries mm. who have better access to all those connectivities. Mm. Um, there is a lot which has been done to decrease the number of victims on the road. But still, we need to go further mm -hmm. and then to address what we just discussed. In developing countries, you don't have access to all those uh, sophisticated means and uh, facilities mm. and uh, technologies but uh, unfortunately that's where 90 percent of the victims are occurring 90 percent 90 percent and mm. it's uh, here it's not enough education mm -hmm. not enough law enforcement mm -hmm. unfortunately very often there is corruption mm -hmm. and uh, road infrastructure are poor vehicles are old mm -hmm. and post crash care is not adapted mm. And in, in, in countries, let's not talk about high-tech, but very low-tech, road signs. Mm -hmm. We can have unique data on what kind of information people pay attention to, mm -hmm. how they can be influenced. Something yeah. very counterintuitive is that on long roads that are straight, if you remove signs, people pay more attention. Interesting. This is the whole thing about being assisted, mm -hmm. because they feel less safe, hence mm -hmm. they pay more attention. So it goes from very high-tech, AI to road signs. Every aspect of road mm. safety can benefit from the campaign, which is, by the way, hashtag tech for road safety, mm -hmm. led by FIA. So give me one tip. If, I'm, if I want to make sure when I'm driving, my kids who are in the car are going to remain safe, I'm going to get to my destination without crossing. What's the one thing you would tell me to do? I mean, first you put your safety belt. Yep. Okay, I've done <laughs> in that. In the front and in the back. Yep. And make sure that everybody has a safety belt. Mm -hmm. And then clearly you must respect the rules. Mm -hmm. You know, you must respect uh, the speed limit. You must have your attention full focus 
on the road mm. and not away from the road. And well, switch off your mobile phone. Switch off my mobile phone. I usually just give it to the kids and then I dictate to them. Is that all right? Okay, yeah, good <laughs> maybe, maybe we can take you as a road safety ambassador. Yes, exactly. I would love to be. Olivier, what about you? What's the one thing that you've learned from looking at people's brains when they're in this in this uh, driving simulation, when they're paying attention? What's the thing that surprised you? Well, the first thing we we found out, and we knew that, is to listen to Jean. <laughs> because Jean not only runs the biggest organization that is related to automotive, mm. but has a prestigious past as leading Formula One team mm -hmm. and even one of the most prestigious brands in the car industry. Mm. So it's important to have every aspect involved when we're working on research. The one thing that we saw, and yesterday, thanks to you, mm. we were with Nico Rosberg, Amazing. the 2016 uh, Formula One mm. world champion, who's helping us and supporting this campaign, and we're so grateful to Nico. And we saw that when someone like Nico is driving the simulator, he's highly focused. Mm. We saw that the, his visual cortex mm -hmm. has a peak activity when he's driving, whereas people, when they discover the simulator, they don't really know what kind of information to pick up when they accelerate. Mm. And this is what we were looking for, all these mental neural signatures mm. of attention that not only are we able to measure in real life situations thanks to our technology, but thanks to the Institute for Spinal Cord and uh, Brain in Paris, we would have an incredible amount of data that uh, we count on Jean to bring to the World Economic Forum and the world leaders. Something which is very important, we did not speak, and we're just thinking about the ladies involved in supporting mm. road safety. And I'm thinking about uh, uh, Ariana Huffington, mm -hmm. which make a book about droneness. Mm -hmm. And I mean droneness, I mean also a killer on yeah. the road. Okay. So when you start to have your eyes, which uh, make you feel mm -hmm. you're a bit sleepy, you must stop immediately. Mm -hmm. You must not fight against that, otherwise you will be injured and people in your car will be injured and even could be killed. Sleep well. <laughs> I know what I've got to do, now I've just got to go out and do it. Thank you very much, Jean Olivier, for joining you, me Edie. here at the Hub Culture Ice House and I'm Edith Lush. Tech for road safety. <laughs>